I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the Department Drawing and Painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Module 27, Yukio Pictures of the Floating World. The most lively art that flourished under the Tokugawa shoguns was the Yukio, the art of the floating world. The gaiety and extravagance of the floating world of Edo reached its climax in the Genroku era. In the Tokugawa period, the military, aristocratic and newly rich merchants wanted to carry pictures into their houses. The fashionable gatherings, pageantry and festivals that went around them. Itoku, Kano Naganobu, Hishikawa Moronobu were the artists who created kakimono hanging scroll paintings on wood block prints along with some screen paintings, printed books and imeke hand scroll. The Yoshiwara continued to inspire artists of Yukio until well into the 19th century. Although the Kano, Namban, Nanga and even Tosa schools all contributed to the rich tapestry of Tokugawa art, all were to a greater or lesser degree derivative from something else. The Kano, Namban and Nanga styles were a foreign inspiration, while the Tosa was a conscious keeping alive of the ancient tradition of the narrative hand scroll. To the extent that they were original, their originality lay in the novel blending of elements from two or three schools, such as we find in the work of Maruyama Okyo. The liveliest art that flourished under the Tokugawa shoguns and by the art the most original was the Yukio, the art of the floating world. The artists of Yukio claimed that they were reviving the true Yuamito in opposition to the foreign academic Kano that had dominated official painting for several centuries. If this were all they achieved, the Yukio would be of little interest, but they did far more than this. They created a new kind of art to reflect and to satisfy the needs of a new society. In the early years of the Tokugawa period, the patrons were military aristocratic class as before, and a few newly rich merchants whose eyes were dazzled by the splendor of the great Momoyama screens and sliding doors. Nevertheless, patrons no longer desired the odd conventional subject of Japanese art, pine trees, flowers, or scenes from the tale of Genji. They wanted to carry into their houses the fashionable gatherings, pageantry and festivals that went on around them. Some Kano artists had treated these subjects as early as the 16th century. In 1574, for example, Itoku painted a screen of life in Kyoto and its suburbs and we have already referred to Kano Naganobu's great screens dancing at the Cherry Blossom Festival in the Hara collection. By the 17th century, however, the interest was already shifting away from these still purely aristocratic themes to the world of rising common people. screens known as the women amusing themselves or since they once belonged to Matsura family or since they once belonged to 
Matsu Yura family in northern Kyushu. As the Matsu Yura Biobo, they were painted sometime before 1650. The name of the artist is not known. It is clear, however, that he was not trained in the Kano school. The screens now show women and little girls engaged in various pastimes such as card playing, music, making up and smoking introduced into Japan from Europe. Several of their dresses also reveal foreign influence. Screens depicting gorgeous dress materials were very fashionable at the time, partly as an echo of Momoyama grandeur that was beginning to filter down to middle class and partly as a symbol of a newfound prosperity. In the Matsu Yura screens, the richness of Momoyama color is blended with a new realism, theme and feeling. Like others of the same kind, they represent a natural transition both in subject matter and style. From the large-scale colorful aristocratic art of the Momoyama period to the intimate small-scale popular art of the 18th century, the true Yukio Hishikawa Moronobu, an actor of the Nakamura Theatre, In the thriving city of Edo, the common man for the first time discovered both freedom and prosperity. The government indeed, attempted by an endless stream of petty regulations to curtail his freedom, but these merely drove him to seek what compensation he could and his energy found an outlet in the great variety of material and physical pleasures that the city had to offer. His moral code taught that so long as he provided for his wife and family at home, what he did outside was his own affair. He took his pleasures where he found them, chiefly in the Yoshiwara, the grey quarter of the city. Here a samurai could indulge in brawling, drinking and listeniousness to a degree that would not have been tolerated elsewhere. The commoner might take no part in the ritual ceremony of the aristocracy, but in Yoshiwara he found a substitute in the beauty of the dancing girls, tea house waitresses and prostitutes, in the fashion parades and in the rigid, though no doubt playful etiquette by which they gave some dignity to their calling. The gaiety and extravagance of the floating world of Edo reached its climax in the Ganaruka era. But the Yoshiwara continued to inspire artists of the Yukio until well into the 19th century. For the duration of the Edo period, Japan was close to the outside world except for small outpost of the Dutch East India Company, which was isolated on the island of Deshima in the Bay of Nagasaki. And the occasional contact with China and Korea being cut off from the events that were shaping the rest of the civilized world during these two and a half centuries, the Japanese had to rely on their own resources for all artistic endeavors. They excelled themselves in the hothouse environment and produced such a rich and colorful legacy of painting, crafts, theater, music, and fashion. It is tempting to wonder how interesting it would be for whose societies to be isolated in this way for enrichment of their own cultures. For Westerners, the Edo period is perhaps the most noted 
for Yukio pictures, which reached Europe in the mid of the 19th century, waiting to be discovered. The world Yukio, the adolescent floating world, first appeared in writing that date from the medieval period. at which time it has religious connotations and was used in referring to the transience of life on earth. Elusive, often painful and all too brief. Later during the Edo period, the meaning of the world changed somewhat and took on rather a sardonic tone to denote the new world of hedonism, fashion, and style. The world of Kabuki theatre and the pursuit of delicatation in the pleasure quarters, particularly those of the Yoshiwara in the North Tokyo. That is what is called the floating world. The word caught on in popular usage, Yukio. Talk was highly colored, race and suggestive. The language of dalliance and filtration and Yukio madness referred to an addition of the acquisite delights of pleasure quarters, which was becoming epidemic. Yukio were the paintings and prints that depicted this floating world. This new and colorful stratum became a vital part of Edo society, and especially its art, and to see how it evolved it is worth looking briefly at the historical background. The early 17th century saw the whole of Japan after more than a couple of centuries of intermittent civil wars at peace and unified under the rigid government of the Tokugawa shogunate. The city of Edo, Tokyo, had become the new administrative capital. The regional feudal lords were required by law to spend part of each year. The purpose of this requirement was twofold. Firstly, the Daimos family had to stay in Edo while the lord was visiting his country Fifida and were in fact hostages. And secondly, the level of splendor in which he was obliged to live in the city usually kept him painfully short of money and therefore unlikely to be able to marshal the funds and forces for any anti-government mischief. This demonstrated considerable shrewdness and caution on the part of the shogunate and the system worked rather well for the greatest part of the two and a half centuries that the regime was in power. Social stratification in the country was clearly delineated with the shogun. Imperial family noble courtiers and regional daimyo lords forming the apex of the pyramid followed by the samurai, the arms-bearing warrior class, and bureaucratic administrators. About 80% of the population were rice farmers and formed the middle-ranking layer, while the bottom layer of society was made up of craftsmen and merchants known as chonin. They counted as the bulk of the residents of Edo and other main cities. In the early years of the Edo period, the ruling Daimo had been economically independent and lived luxuriously off a taxed percentage of the rice harvest produced in the country land holdings. By the end of the 17th century, an economic disparity had arisen with many of the Chonin having more wealth at their disposal than many of their better-born superiors. In Edo, the center of this world 
was the Yoshivara, the vast courtesan quarter situated close to the Sensoji temple in Asakusa in the northeast of the city. Evil supposedly came from this direction and the temple was sited to protect the Edo castle and the resident shogun. The area was established in 1657 and immediately became a highly successful enterprise. The end came in 1958 when the Japanese government outlawed prostitution and so drove this ancient profession underground into the hands of criminals. At the Omau, however, the retainers had to be dismissed and the customer entered on foot into a broad street, the Naka Dori, which was crossed by numerous side streets, all lived with tea houses and brothels. The area came to life at dusk as the lanterns were lit and the first customers appeared through the gate. In each house, the courtesan sat at street level, carefully made up and dressed in their finery with their OB sash tied at the front in the manner unique to their profession. In some of the buildings, they were typically separated from the street by wooden slats through which they could conduct negotiations with a customer before he was allowed into the house. The word Iki was coined to denote good dress sense, a clever combination of colors, an unusual weave of cloth, a daring but successfully patterned. Courtesans were ranked according to their beauty and abilities and of course their price followed suit. Highest of all were the Oiran, the most beautiful of all peerless in wit and above all skilled in the handling of men. At the most there were 18 in the Yoshiwara who were treated like princesses and could take their pick of lovers from the highest ranks of nobles, courtiers and samurai. Most of the better class courtesans had two young girl assistants or kamuro who allowed their mistresses everywhere in attendance, who followed their mistresses everywhere in attendance. They are often depicted in yokie side by side and walking a couple of paces behind their mistress holding flowers or carrying little gifts for some favored customer. An example is of a courtesan and maid by Tisai Hokuba dated to 1771 to 1844. Ink and colors on silk, private collection, Hokuba was one of the finest pupils of the illustrious Hokusai who excelled in both printmaking and printing, especially in depicting the beautiful woman of Edo. In this picture a sumptuously dressed high-ranking Goyaran courtesan is shown out with her kimino, young made on the way to an assignment. If by the age of 24, the young Kamuryo showed promising signs of becoming a good courtesan herself. Yukio followed the typical pattern of all schools of artistic endeavor and evolved from an initial period of development and experimentation to a peak of maturity and finally a decline into decadence and repetition. The four stages of Yukio are seen in the genre screen paintings of the early 17th century. To 
Kanosa and Kano school artist mentioned above, which show in minute detail the colorful proletarian life of the streets and temples of Kyoto and the festivals and popular amusements in the countryside. An example is of entertainments at the house of pleasure. Unknown artist dated to 17th century, six panel screen and in a private collection. This especially informative painting shows in great detail the lavish entertainments at one of the grander houses established for the entertainment of men. On the far right, a young customer is having his eyebrows plucked, a last minute adjustment before entering. In the third panel, from the right, four young women seem to be encouraging a tipsy man to dance, while in the pavilion, men and women smoke and play games. On the far left of the screen, another party sitting around a dance are celebrating the flowering cherry tree nearby. In a short time, these artists departed from the epic wide-scale views seen on screens and turned their attention to focus more on intimate details. And turned their attention to focus on more intimate detail. Figures shown singly or in group, for example, this trend reaching an apotheosis in the QBA, head and shoulders, prints of famous. An example painted by Utamaro is of a courtesan. It is a woodblock print and at present in private collection. An example of a Kubi E, head and shoulders print depicting Anran, one of the high ranking courtesans of the pleasure quarters. For sheer color and interest, and also no doubt for fun, the UQ artist spent more time portraying the fascinating goings on in Kabuki theater and later in Yoshiwara. Kabuki had evolved from origins in Shinto shrine performances to become a popular amusement where, under the guise of theater, courtesans cavorted and displayed their charms to potential customers in audience. This led to lawlessness and rowdy disturbances. So, in 1629, government was inspired to issue an edict banning on women from Kabuki stage. Kabuki then continued to be Ba, a male preserve, and still is today, and moreover, provides a rich supply of subjects for Yukio artists. In addition to picturizing subjects such as Kabuki and the Yoshiwara, the Yukio artists frequently adapted classical scenes from famous poems or stories as allegorical subjects for depiction in the new style. Rather like European painters of the Renaissance who portrayed biblical characters in 15th century costumes. Yukio prints, particularly triplets, are often seen showing a group of courtesans and the lovers in some pashtashi of a scene from ancient legend. An example of the type is cooling off by the Sumida River by Tori Kiyonaga. Most of the Yukio from mid 17th century to the mid 19th century are kakimono, hanging scrolls, paintings or woodblock prints along with some screen paintings printed books and e makey hand scrolls. In the West, the word yukio is often mistakenly used to mean 
just wood block prints and no doubt because Europeans were the first to rediscover the beauty of these prints when they were first used as wrapping paper by the Japanese for goods exported to Europe during the late 19th century. It was at this time that some of the finest collections of Yukio were made in the West when they were still considered rather vulgar objects of some disdain in the land of their origin. The influence of Yukio on such artists as Whistler, Monet and Van Gogh is well known and much studied and Impressionism the one area in Western art with which the Japanese most identify today. It is because these UK were created for a popular market that of the chonin classes who frequented the Kabuki theatre and the Yoshiwara which so many have survived. Considering the number of works that must have been destroyed by fire, earthquake and neglect, it is easy to see that the original volume must have been vast indeed. What remains can only provide a few tantalizing clues to help the imagination recreate the complete picture of the world they portray. As a mirror of popular culture, Yukio eventually looked to subjects rather than Yoshiwara beauties of the kabuki actors to the sumo wrestling ring and with an increased interest in travel to famous scenic spots located on the routes that radiated from Edo. The first figure to appear out of the tradition of 17th century genre painting who can be considered to be Yukio artist is identified by name so as being known simply as the Kambun master. The woodblock prints depicting courtesans and their lovers outlined in flowing black lines, sometimes highlighted with rather rough hand applied coloring. An example is of a courtesan with flower arrangement, ink and color and powdered mica on paper at present in the private collection. This early example of a Yukio painting was painted in 1660. The atmosphere has been enhanced by preparing the paper with powdered mica, which gives a silvery scene to the background. During Edo period, the better Yukio artist drew the design on paper and professional printing house would arrange for engraving of the block and also the production and sale of the prints. In the 18th century, with the development of multicolored prints, a set of blocks would be made, each block printing a single color. Refinements that can be seen particularly on Surimono limited edition prints for special occasions, including Gaufarage, embossing to give a textured surface to the paper and the application of special materials such as powdered mica to give a shiny appearance. Blocks were usually made to make about 200 prints before being recut for the next edition. The slight variation seen from one edition to the next provide ample material for connoisseurs to argue over which was the first and which was the last. The first Yukio artist who can be identified by name was Hishikawa Moronobu. Who 
was possibly a pupil of the Cambon master and whose style he imitated earlier in his career when he was illustrating printed picture books. His early works were also largely erotic or suggestive depiction of floating world, simply printed in black ink on paper. An example of monochrome woodblock print titled Lovers Under a Mosquito Net is a good example. But as his popularity grew, commissions came in from wealthier clients and he turned his hand to painting Yukio subjects in colors on hanging scrolls and screens in his own very distinctive style. Typically, his women were full-fleshed and plump-cheeked with narrow eyes and raised eyebrows, which gave them a questioning look as if they were calculating what a client might pay. From Moronobu's time, the world of Yukio took off and scores of new artists appeared to set up their own studios. Many of them are household names as popular in the West as they are in the native Japan. Taigate Sudo, Endo and Koryu Sai Isoda, Tori Kiyonaga and Suzuki Harunobu and of course the peerless masters Utagana Yutamaru, Katsushika Hokusai and Utagawa Hiroshiga and mysterious Sharaku. The school, a movement of Yukio, reached its peak with Hara Nobu, and although later artists may have been more brilliant in skill and imagination, they had no hesitation in crossing the invisible line of good taste for the sake of effect and in doing so began the side into decadence. For Toshu Sai Sharaku, active 1794-1795. Nothing is known about his whereabouts. What remains are some of the most unusual and expressive prints, all of which were issued by his publisher. Tutsutaya Zuaburo during some 10 months in the years 1794 and 1795. The most famous ones are Kubi A, head and shoulder pictures of the leading Kabuki actors of the time. Sharaku delighted in exaggerating the features and gestures of his subjects in almost cartoon-like manner. A nose, a little long eyes, more crossed, a grimace, more forced. An example is of a woodblock print of the actor Mitsu Goro in the role of Genzo. It is a woodblock print with mica ground and at present in a private collection. Sharaku is famous for his actor prints such as this in which he shows stars of the Kabuki theatre in one of the exaggerated and much celebrated poses. Kitagawa Utamaro excelled among the Yukio artists for his pictures of the woman who lived and worked in pleasure industry of Edo. A unique and excellent example is of an urban woodblock print in the British Museum London titled The Flirt from the series 10 Examples of Female Physiognomy. A 
apart from the excellent draftsmanship and quality of his prints utamaro also shows an uncanny knack of revealing the moods and temperaments of his subjects and even produced a series of prints just to depict types of women it is obvious that he spent his life studying them with great care to understand the very nature of the feminist their way with fashions their skilled enticements and expressions and he knew just how to capture them at just such moments when they were irritable to men his output was voluminous and it includes many well known series of shunga prints as well as some fine paintings some of the best pieces are the front pieces to shunga editions such as the famous album plate in uta makura the poem of the pillow this undisputed masterpiece of yukio shows two lovers embracing on a balcony in what must be one of the most romantic pictures ever created utagawa hiroshigi in the example of the poem of the pillow which was published in 1788 masterpiece of uk shows two lovers embracing on a balcony in what must be one of the most romantic and erotic pictures ever created the woman is facing away her left hand caressing the face of her lover and it is presumed that they are kissing he has his hand on her right shoulder and the other hand is holding a fan their kimonos are coming adrift and hint deliciously at what will follow it is in this print that utamaro demonstrates his wonderful sense of line close inspection reveals that the lover's right eye seem to connect with his lady's hair in extraordinary successful compositional brevedo just look at that eye granting that the culmination of yukio prints was marked by utamaro's efforts pictures of the demi monde made by his later followers tend with the odd exception to become more decadent and in many cases sink into unmitigated vulgarity with coarse and inexpert coloring and poor composition but two artists stand out not just for portraying beauties or actors in the yuki a mode but also for turning their attention to other colorful everyday sights that abound all around during the late edo period takawa hiroshiji 1797 to 1858 chose to limit his oeuvre to depicting the idyllic scenery of pre-concrete japan and by so concentrating his talents excelled in this field for more than any other of the yukio print artist after handing over his post of a fireman to his son he pursued his creation full time he soon departed from the usual yukio subjects of the floating world thus these two artists utamaro and moronobu stand out just for portraying beauties of actors in the yukio mode